Hey everyone, it's Megan. I'm here today to do the Disney book tag. It was created originally by Kat from Cavitastic in response to the release of this new book, The Isle of the Lost by Melissa de la Cruz. It is a book that it sounds really intriguing. I am thinking of picking it up because it is about the descendants of Disney villains and villainesses and how they end up on this island or they're like going to school with the descendants of famous Disney heroes and heroines. So it's a really intriguing concept. And yeah, so she created the tag in honor of that. And I have decided to do it too, because as soon as I saw the words Disney book tag, I was in. As you can see by the disarray around me, I'm still in the process of moving. And so for the next um, another two, three videos, um, things will look a little different. And then I'll be in my new uh, living environment. And so, yeah, it'll, it should be all neat and tidy by then. But until then, I do apologize for the mess. Question one is The Little Mermaid. Name a character that felt a bit like a fish out of water or a bit out of place. And for this one, I decided to go with Kath from Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. In this story, Kath, who feels like she is uh, pulling away, being pulled away um, from her uh, twin sister, Ren, um, she is starting college and... Um, so the separation she feels begins when Ren has decided to um, get a different roommate and um, not live in the same dorm room as Kath. And so she feels lonely and she is impartial to the roommate that she has. And so she feels generally like a fish out of water because all she's had is her sister and the fan fiction in her life for um, Simon and... Sorry, it's been a little while since I've read this. Simon Snow, which is kind of like Harry Potter. And so she writes fan fiction for that. And basically that and her sister is all she's ever known. And so she totally feels like a fish out of water when she goes to college. But when she starts to let go and um, meet new people and make new friends and have new experiences, a lot of amazing things happen to her. And I absolutely love this book. Number two is Cinderella. Name a character that went through a major transformation. And for this one, I have two. And it is Jude and Noah from I'll Give You the Sun by Janie Nelson. This story is beautiful. It is They are twins, Jude and Noah. And um, when their mom dies, when they're in their early teens, there's that and a bunch of other things that just sets off this chain of events so that by the time the story officially begins in present day, when they are 16, they are not close at all anymore. And... They've just done so many different things to each other that they never meant to do. It's pretty intense emotionally, and just to see the major sea change that both of these characters go through from the beginning to the end and how it all unravels, it's just beautiful to read and enthralling, and I couldn't stop reading it once I got into it. And yeah, that's my choice. Number three is Snow White. Name a book with an eclectic cast of characters, and I have decided to go with The Search for Delicious by Natalie Babbitt. This book takes place at a time when this prime minister is trying to write this dictionary and he's trying to come up with a definition for delicious and of course there are, everybody has a conflicting opinion about what it should mean so he sends his assistant Galen to go out throughout all of the kingdom to take a poll onto what the definition of delicious is which is pretty much a stupid idea because what two votes are actually going to be alike so along the way um because it's a pretty epic journey. He meets so many characters. As you can see, he meets a mermaid, he meets dwarves, he meets a wool dweller, he just meets all different kinds of people within the villages, and the wind is a character, and yeah, because this is sort of like a fairy tale type setting, just you're gonna run into a bunch of different kinds of characters, and I loved this book for that reason. Number four is a bit of an unfortunate question. It is Sleeping Beauty. Name a book that puts you to sleep, and I have decided to go with How I Live Now by Meg Rossoff. I remember being um, on a bus going home and trying to read this book and I remember falling asleep, literally. It's unfortunate, it really is, but I really dislike this book and probably the primary reason is because of the author's decision not to put quotation marks when the characters speak. The story just consists of these long long paragraphs without breaks and without quotes and it gets kind of confusing and hard to follow. So yeah, that was an unfortunate reason for why I disliked it. Question number five is The Lion King. Name a character that had something traumatic happen to them in their childhood. So for this one, it's probably no big surprise. I decided to pick Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables by Ella Montgomery. This girl not only lost her parents, but in the process of being passed on from foster parent to orphanage, 
in the end, I don't even quite remember how many places she was. I feel like it was two different foster families and the orphanage before she ended up in PEI. But in between, there's just, I know from um, the previous garden she had before Matthew and Marilla, there was a lot of other stuff that she went through that isn't really talked about a whole lot in the book. But it's very informed what we would call now like alcohol abuse and drudgery and just neglect and all this stuff. So if you think of a story like Bambi where he just lost his mom to a hunter and that's part of life, like that was his major traumatic event. For this girl, it was um, really the bulk of her childhood, almost all of her childhood, up until she came to live with the Cuthberts. And so that's why I picked her. Number six, Beauty and the Beast. Name a beast of a book that you were intimidated by but then found to be really beautiful in the end. This one is a bit of a screwy decision, okay? I decided to go with the picture of Dorian Gray, and you're probably wondering why, because it's only a couple of hundred um, pages long. But I was intimidated because I knew it was a classic work of literature, and I find with classic books, I automatically think I'm not going to understand it very well, or just, or I'll be bored by it, but it was not the case at all. It was totally easy to follow along, and I was completely wrong about it. Um, but as for the beautiful ending, uh, if you've read this book, then outwardly it's not that beautiful, but the message behind it, and what you glean from it about vanity and um, what it can do to you, that I found to be a beautiful, um, poetic kind of way to end it and appropriate to. Number seven is Aladdin. Name a character that gets a wish granted for better or for worse. I have decided to go with both Victor and Eli from Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I feel like I can't really talk too much about this without giving away the primary plot. Um, but basically in college, they are experimenting with different ways to become extraordinary, which means you pretty much, you have a kind of superpower, um, as a result of experimenting with suicide to see if you can bring yourself back to life. So like I said, these boys are experimenting with it and, um, the book follows along with the rest of that, the, um, the implications, the, the ramifications of that. In the case of one of the characters, um, the, his wish is granted for the better, for another it's for worse, but in either event, um, it's a destructive force that comes from their wishes being granted, and I um, just re finished reading this, I think, in the past month, and so I'll be talking about it more in my wrap-up but I loved it. Coming in at number eight is Mulan. Name a character that pretends to be someone or something that they're not. I couldn't come up with an immediate answer right away except for one rather comical, obvious answer, and that is Count Olaf from the series of Unfortunate Events. This guy is not trying or pretending to be someone he's not um, just to make people like him more. Well, he is, I suppose, but it's only to fool the people that are in charge of the Baudelaire orphans in an effort to attain them and then consequently their fortune. So he puts on all of these ridiculous disguises um, throughout the series, and I am only a few books, I'm like five books, and I just finished uh, book number five, but I'm reading them every month, and it's really rather hilarious to um, see him each book in his new disguise and to see how the Baudelaire's unravel his disguise and reveal the evil doer that he is. Number nine is Toy Story. Name a book where you wish the characters would just come to life. This is also probably no surprise that I've decided to go with the Harry Potter characters. Not all the characters. I don't know. It's tough. I basically... Hmm. It's difficult because do you want Voldemort to be real or no? But I wish the wizarding world at least was real so that you could just go through these certain portals and enter it in and visit um, whenever you want to without them realizing that you were a muggle and kicking you out. Because I would love to have tea with Albus Dumbledore. I mean, seriously, who wouldn't? Last question, number 10, Disney Descendants. Name your favorite villain or morally ambiguous character. I thought and thought and I ended up eventually coming up with Gollum from the Hobbit slash Lord of the Rings series. I know at times he does the most evil things and can be really, really scary, but you cannot help but feel bad for him and that he like just got drawn into it by his addiction to this ring that attaches itself to its owners and makes you crave it all the time. I mean craving wearing it all the time. So I feel like partially it's not his fault and it's really pitiful to see him at war with himself eternally between Schmeagol and Gollum and especially during the movies. Um, I know it kind of tugged at my heartstrings a little bit. Nonetheless he is considered a villain and what he does um, to Frodo taking one of his fingers there is a pretty 
blank move. Nonetheless, most of the time he is considered a villain. Maybe not as big of a villain as the ring itself or, um, you know, Lord Sauron. But still, you can't help but go back and forth with your feelings about him. So there you have it. That is the Disney book tag. Please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this and if you're going to do it yourself because I would love other people to do this. This was a really fun tag to do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great week and I shall see you soon with another video. Bye everyone.